All right, you guys, this is the Rockfire Restoration Part 16, and the first thing I'll be working on is the gray hose that feeds air to the valve banks. In the past few weeks, I've seen this hose spring quite a few leaks, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it on all the characters. From my experience, once this hose ages, there's really no saving it. So, you know, even on characters where it isn't leaking already, I, I don't want it to, to start or propagate. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace it all now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the hose off the barb fitting. And uh, one thing, you know, that's just a reality of doing this is you are going to scratch the barb fitting. But uh, to my knowledge, it and, you know, from my experience, I really haven't seen it cause any problems. Um, unless the barb fitting is like extremely damaged, which normally the blade will not cause a lot of damage. You see, you can't even really tell that it's been scored by the blade. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to do that for all of the fittings. All right, so this is my brand new roll of hose. I got about 101 feet of this, and I think that will be enough to rehose the entire show. All right, so uh, one of the next steps we're going to do before we place the hose on the barb is we are going to heat the hose up because the hose is very thick, and uh, the barb fitting, of course, to seal it is a little bit larger than the inner diameter of the hose, and. Uh, this really is not as flexible as the uh, little hoses that they use to go to the individual character movement. So we're gonna need to heat it up. Um, you can use a lighter. I wouldn't recommend that, but you can if you don't have a heat gun like this. Um, a blow dryer might work, but I've never tried that. I'm not sure if it would get hot enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make sure you don't have anything heat sensitive around this because it can get really hot. And uh, we are just going to heat up this hose. and then we're going to press it on to this. And you can see how easy that goes on. All right, so one of the things I've uh, gone ahead and done is I actually bought a ton of hose clamps. And the reason I did that is I found that uh, when I put this new hose on, um, I'm pretty sure that whenever Creative Engineering sent these characters out um, and they were putting the original hose on these valve banks, they, they put an adhesive on the actual barb fitting. They put an adhesive on the barb fitting and then they pressed the hose on and that, that really made a, a perfect seal. Um, but I, I don't know what adhesive they used and I also would sort of prefer to use something that might not wear down over time. So I've gone ahead and I bought all these hose clamps and uh, I've really found that if you don't use hose clamps with the new hose, it will leak. And uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and do hose clamps for all of the barb fittings uh, on the new hose. So now that's really on there. There is gonna be no way that that leaks. All right, so Billy Bob's valve bank is done. I just finished rehosing it. And um, some of you guys may be actually curious why I'm not replacing this bottom hose right here that, that runs to the exhaust. And the reason I'm not doing that is uh, I have found that that does not experience enough air pressure, I think probably less than 20 PSI, that um, you know I, I really don't think that I'm gonna encounter any issues with that. I have it in the past. I've really only encountered issues with the actual main air coming in that's coming in at 80 psi so all right so now we will do a final test by airing billy bob up and hoping that we don't hear any leaks okay well there is an air conditioner running in the background so that makes it a little bit hard to hear but i do not hear any leaks all right so i'm getting started on rebuilding uh, mitzi's head frame so as you guys can see and i mentioned this in the last video 
the new ear lever holders are welded on and uh, so now it's just time to reassemble the head and one of the things I noticed um, I didn't have any issues with the eyelids or the mouth but um, as I was looking at the cylinder and this is something I'll show you guys um, just so that you know um, you guys can see that the uh, you can see the nut on this rod is actually hitting the uh, I guess you could call it the nose of the cylinder and the reason it's doing that is uh, so these cylinders are designed to have a, a bumper o-ring in the back and in the front and what happens is the uh, o-ring in the back and I'll show you where it's supposed to be um, it will get lodged back here near where the port is or I guess it would be actually the port that it's lodged in and um, basically that means that the cylinder can go back a little bit farther than it normally would be able to and it's actually hitting the nose of the cylinder it should be out like like that but it's in like that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know uh, even if I didn't have that issue I probably would have gone ahead and, and rebuilt all the cylinders in the head just because I have it apart and uh, I want to make sure that um, I, uh, I don't have to take this head apart um, at any point in the uh, near future so I'm just gonna go ahead and rebuild the cylinders now and uh, but yeah you can see like the mouth or I guess this is the other eyelid cylinder they must have replaced it at some point because it's a Chicago cylinder uh, it you can see how it sits right there it's not hitting so I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild all these cylinders and so just like in any other video I've shown I'm going to put a wrench on both ends you could put this in a vise I probably would ideally put this in the vise but um, my vise is just sitting on the floor right now I haven't connected it to a table so I'm just gonna go ahead and already pre loosened it so you can see all right, so I just took apart the cylinder, and what's interesting is I actually, I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, the O-ring is not dislodged at all. It's actually back there. So um, I don't know if this is some kind of manufacturing error or if uh, maybe somehow the wrong sized rod is being used in here or the wrong length. An interesting fact about cylinders and valve cylinders, which these are, is that Creative Engineering didn't stop using them because they were too expensive or because Chicago air cylinders were cheaper. They actually stopped using them because CNV could not produce cylinders at the rate Creative Engineering needed. And it actually got so bad that they were sending out cylinders that didn't work or that had defects. So Creative Engineering went ahead and uh, started using Chicago air as their sole source of air cylinders. So it is possible this could be one of those defective cylinders. All right, so I'm pulling the nut off and everything um, just to see. It almost looks like they may have somehow threaded this rod more. That actually this looks kind of abnormally. This looks like more threads than I normally would expect to see. Um, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Let's... I guess I'll compare that to the other cylinder. Yeah, that's very interesting. Because um, as you guys can see here, that's very odd. Um, I am not sure how to explain that. Um, but what's interesting is it almost looks like this one's been cut short. This is definitely an abnormal that's abnormally short, um, so, but this one looks long, so I don't. Then I've taken apart the uh, Chicago air cylinder, and that one, let's compare the length of those two, that's, that's about the same. Um, the C and V cylinder is uh, possibly a tiny bit longer, but um, those are basically the same. So I'm really not sure what's going on. So I'll go ahead and rebuild them and, and see what happens. Um, kind of looks like it's, it's always been that way. And, and it, apparently it hasn't caused any issues. So um, that, that surprises me. Maybe something magical will happen. and It'll magically fix itself whenever I rebuild it. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I figured I'd show you guys this. This is actually this is a container that is uh, specifically designated for um, CNV and Chicago air cylinders. Um, I actually repurposed a tackle box and it had all these containers in it. And um, so you can see I've got both sizes. This is the uh, larger size. This would be like Fats's, uh, Fats's arms and uh, you know Mitzi's, Mitzi's forearms, the head up, and then 
can see over here I've actually run out of uh, the smaller sides, which would be like for the mouth of the eyelids. Uh, and then I've got the bumpers. I've got the uh, nose cap seals in here. But uh, yeah, those are the bumpers. And uh, yeah, so I think that's a pretty cool way of organizing the O-rings. I've actually got a new bag of these small size O-rings. Had to order some more for this. I think this is uh, 100. So I can rebuild 50 cylinders with this. So one of the O-rings like I won't replace, as you can see, there's an O-ring here uh, to seal the body of the cylinder. Not, I'm not gonna replace that because there's nothing wrong with it and uh, it just acts as a seal. It, it's not, you know, um, it's essentially static. It's not moving at all or doing anything, so. All right, so I just finished rebuilding those cylinders and now I'm going to reinstall them in the head. And so uh, the first step is have this rod that goes through that holds the eyelid cylinders on. All right, so actually before I put that rod through, I'm actually going to reinstall um, the bar that holds on the eye cylinders. All right, so got the eyelid cylinders in. I think I have them in approximately the right position. And then uh, I just put the mouth cylinder in by just putting that pin in right there. So um, now I'll go ahead and put in the mouth lever. All right, so about a year ago, some of you guys may remember that I actually replaced both the eye cylinders and the ear cylinders for Mitzi. And um, I've gone ahead and actually replaced the cylinders again. And the reason I did that is uh, I, I replaced the cylinders originally with these uh, Clippard 9 PS cylinders as opposed to a Clippard 9 SS, which the Rockfire used. And the only difference um, between these cylinders is uh, the 9SS, which is here, is a little bit um, longer because it has these threads on the front, but the, the stroke is identical. So for these, since they're a little bit shorter um, to compensate, I uh, bought these standoffs. But to me, uh, even though it's inside the character and it doesn't matter, uh, it, it kind of bothers me aesthetically. I'll, I'll probably use them for something else. So uh, I had some, some normal 9SS cylinders that are brand new, so I'm just going to replace... Um, replace those nine PS cylinders and use the, the normal ones. Cause these just, I, I, I don't like the look of, uh, of the standoff. So, all right. So I am going to go ahead and install these eye cylinders now. And uh, one of the things I've, I've gone ahead and done is I bought these, uh, these rods and, uh, I'm actually using these in place of the cotter pins because I, I don't particularly like cotter pins. They aren't easy to remove. And in my opinion, they aren't a super pr precise fit. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this. And Creative Engineering did this early on. I, I don't know exactly when they stopped doing it. Um, I think it was probably an expense thing um, because uh, having to buy two set collars and a rod is far more expensive than uh, buying cotter pins. I, 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 these are probably only a couple cents each. So, um, but I, I, I just don't really like cotter pins for, for those reasons and so I'm gonna use these uh, rods.
All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the uh, brand new eyes that Mitzi has. So uh, one of the things I've done, and I've also done this at a couple other um, spots, but I didn't show it, is I've actually lubricated this eye rod, and that's just gonna help um, increase the, the longevity of you know this rod, and probably more so the bronze bushing in the eye. Um, and I've, I've done that on, on all areas that I felt like it was necessary. So definitely recommend lubricating any type of rod that's going to see movement. I'll straighten her eyes once she's on the character and aired up, but for now I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Just for aesthetic purposes. All right, so her eye, her entire eye turn mechanism is now attached. Clearly her eyes aren't centered, but I'll have to air her up to do that. Now I'll put on the eyelids. Probably would have been smarter for me to uh, put on the eyelids before I uh, tighten the set screws because now I'm gonna have to go and loosen that, but that's not that big of a deal. So you can see I'm turning it to where the flat spot is so that I can press the eyelid on. Put the eyelid rods in now. And of course, I'll definitely have to adjust the position of those as well as the eyes once she is aired up. All right, so as you guys can see, Mitzi's head is installed. Now, I didn't install the uh, ear lever cylinders, and the reason I didn't was because I'm out of pins, replacement pins uh, that I was using in place of the cotter pins, so I'm ordering more of those, and then I will attach those, and she will be ready to go.